Donald, and I'm the CEO of the Ottawa Public Library, and I have the pleasure to have by my side for this special event, Leslie Weir, the Librarian and Archivist of Canada. We want to acknowledge that Ottawa is built on unceded Anishinaabe Algonquin territory. Les peuples de la nation Algonquin Anishinaabe habitent ce territoire depuis des millénaires et continue aujourd'hui de l'enrichir par leur culture et leur présence. We honor the peoples and the land of the Anishinaabe Algonquin Nation. Uh, we honor all the First Nations, Inuit and Métis elders, people and communities living in Ottawa and across Canada. Thank you. Merci. Miigwech. Well, good morning, everyone. Bonjour à tous. Kwe Kakina. As the chair of the Ottawa Public Library Board of Trustees, it is my honor to be here today and to welcome our distinguished guests. My thanks to the elders and to the host nation, and thank you to Grand Chief John Boudria, Anishinaabe Algonquin National Tribe Council, Chief Dylan White Duck, Kirigan Zibi Anishinaabe, Councillor Merv Sarazin, on behalf of Chief Wendy Jocko, Algonquins of Pikwagnagan First Nation, and representatives of the Anishinaabe Algonquin Nation for being here with us today. I'm also pleased to recognize the Honorable Stephen Gibo, Minister of Canadian Heritage. Thank you for being with us. The Honorable Catherine McKenna, Minister of Infrastructure and Communities, and also the MP for this federal riding. His Worship, Jim Watson, Mayor of the City of Ottawa and my city council colleagues and board trustees that are joining us today. Thank you very much to our vice chair, Kathy Fisher, Harvey Slack, and my council colleague and board trustee uh, uh, colleague, uh, Ralston King as well. Thank you very much for being here. Oh, uh, and I think we also have Mary Rose Brown as well with us. Thank you for coming. I also want to recognize representatives of the Library and Archives Canada, the Ottawa Public Library, and members of the project team that have been working very hard on this uh, for quite a few years now. Bienvenue à vous tous et merci d'être ici aujourd'hui pour cette annonce importante. It is my pleasure to introduce Anita Tanasco, Director of Education, Kitagan Zibi Education Sector, and Della Menes, Manager of Educational Algonquins of Pikwagnagan First Nation, to offer their introductory remarks. Miigwech for the land acknowledgement. It's a very important way to start our meetings together. Kwe kakana. Greetings, everyone. Minogijigad. It is a nice day. Good morning. Anita Tanasko Nindijnikaz. Kirigan Zibi Nindonjiba. Kichimigwech Kibijaye Gondeje Nungum. My name is Anita Tanasko, and I'm from Kirigan Zibi. I'm the Director of Education for the Kirigan Zibi Anishinaabeg. Thank you all for being here today. I am happy to see elders, elected leadership, and community members who are from Kirigan Zibi and Pekwakanagan here today. On behalf of our nation, the Anishinaabe Algonquin Nation, I welcome you all to the unceded, unsurrendered traditional territory of our nation. Words and names are powerful. On behalf of the Kirigan Zibi Anishinaabe and on behalf of the Anishinaabe Algonquin Nation, I am grateful that the name of the new joint facility for the Ottawa Public Library and Library and Archives Canada will be a name in our Anishinaabe Moin language. I trust that this name will be honored and respected for the lifetime of this upcoming beautiful facility. The Anishinaabe Algonquin Nation is very concerned about language preservation and revitalization. We are cognizant 
of the fact that we are losing some of our fluent speakers and that some of our communities do not have fluent speakers. We ask that the Ottawa Public Library and the Library and Archives Canada continue to work with us in a respectful way as we have done so for the past two years. Please help us to revitalize and record our dialects. Please support us in showing Ottawa and the world that we still exist. Please assist us in sharing our stories as we see fit. I firmly believe that the new joint facility will be a place where we can meet in circle, tell stories, collaborate, learn, work, and flourish. Together we can create social change, a better Canada. I ask that everyone in attendance today continue to work with the Kirigan Zibi Anishinaabeg and the Algonquins of Pequawkanagan First Nation. There are many individuals out there claiming to be Algonquin. Please be careful. We are two very close communities who are a part of the Anishinaabe Algonquin Nation. We can make the important links with the other communities in our nation. We are Anishinaabe Algonquin in our hearts, in our blood, in our language, in our related communities, and we have important stories to tell. Words and names are meaningful. It is such an honor that a word or name in our language will be utilized by everyone for the new Ottawa Public Library, Library and Archives Canada. I believe that as a result of this name, all First Nations, Métis and Inuit will feel welcomed in this new facility. This fa facility and its special name will feel very empowering for all Indigenous peoples. Miigwech, thank you. I want to send out my sincere thanks to the leadership of the Ottawa Public Library, Library and Archives Canada, to the City of Ottawa and the federal government for actively engaging with the Anishinaabe Algonquin Nation in this endeavor. You have not only listened to us, you have taken concrete action by naming this prestigious facility in a language that has been spoken on this land since time immemorial. Miigwech. Thank you. Merci. Good morning, everyone. Today is a special day, not only for First Nation, Inuit, and Métis, but for the city of Ottawa and the world around us. This facility will be a door that opens to our cultural, our language, and our teachings. It gives us a chance to share our knowledge with the world. I have traveled around the world to Europe and seen many facilities, but none is going to be like this. You know, I want to say thank you to the team who had taken the time to come into our community and spent the day with us. And they also went to the community of Kitakon Zibi. And we talked, spent the day discussing things, explaining to us what the new facility would look like. And out of that, visits to the communities, we had a committee formed. Our committee is comprised of an elder and community members, and it's a long journey that it took to get here since March 2019. You know, visits, uh, meetings in Ottawa, and numbers of Zoom calls, but whatever happened out in the world, it did not has stop us in continuing to participate in this important project. As Anita has said, language and culture is very important, and to share this is very important to us. We must educate the people of the world, the history of our people, the history of First Nation and Inuit people. It is only with that understanding that we are able to resolve some of the issues and, and, to, and to know what our next path is going to be down the road. 
It is a long journey, but we will get to the end of it. Thank you for coming out today. Thank you. So without further ado, it is time to launch the official name of this facility and I invite Mariette Buckshot from Kitigon Zibi. She is our language and culture coordinator. She is a fluent speaker and she has the honor of sharing the name for this beautiful new facility. Mariette, I invite you to come forward. Miigwech. Kweka kina, Marriott Buckshot in Indigenous cars, Wa Gush Nido Dem, Kitigan Zibi Anishinaabeg Nidonjaba. Hi, my name is Marriott Buckshot. Fox is my family name, and I'm from Kitigan Zibi. It has been a wonderful, it has been wonderful to work with Ottawa Public Library and Library and Archives Canada in order to choose a name in our language. Our language must be spoken and heard. We care deeply about revitalization of our language, and we are honored that this new facility will have a beautiful name in our language. Kikchiminwendagwad, Wijodam Tayang, Mamwe Ottawa Public Library, Ashij Library, Kaye Archives Canada, Kijinawajunamang, Anishnabe Nozawin. Mam Kaj, Nidinweuninan, Kedabaduk, Ashij Nondagwak. Nikichia Pindendanan, Onje Anike Pima de Zimagak, Nidinweuninan, Ashij Negije Wadiziwinan, Onje Yo Oshke Umbakunigan, Kijianishnabe Nozawin Kadeg. So the name that we honor Ottawa with in our language for this new facility is called Storytelling in English. So I now when we give this name, Adesoke, we are launching it now. So the name of this facility is called Adesoke Storytelling. Miigwech. Thank you to the elders and the host nation for your blessing and for this ideal name that will be synonymous with this sacred and welcoming community space. It is now my pleasure to welcome Mayor Jim Watson to say a few words. Well, thank you very much, uh, Councillor Luloff, and, and what a beautiful name for a beautiful facility in the heart of uh, the city of Ottawa on unceded, unsurrendered territory of the Algonquin Nation. Uh, C'est vraiment un plaisir pour moi d'être ici avec vous aujourd'hui pour cette annonce uh, très positive pour la communauté autochtone et aussi pour la ville d'Ottawa et pour tout notre pays. 
Uh, many of our guests have been recognized. I won't uh, uh, re-recognize them, but we very much appreciate uh, all of our uh, partners and friends from uh, the Algonquin territories to be with us, and in particular, Chief White Duck, thank you very much for taking time from your schedule. It was just a week or so ago, we were just down the road um, renaming the Prince of Wales Bridge uh, the Chief William Commander Bridge, and uh, that was another step uh, in uh, the, the mileposts that we as a community and society have to take uh, in order to uh, truly reconcile with our First Nations. I also want to uh, thank my colleagues on City Council. Ralston uh, King is here, and Chair uh, Matt Luloff, uh, the Councillor for Orleans, who's done a remarkable job as Chair of the Ottawa Public Library Board. He's got such a positive disposition, a can-do attitude. Matt, thank you very, very much for the great work that you continue to do working with Danielle and Leslie and um, all of the other uh, people behind the scenes. I also want to thank our federal partners. We would not be here if it was not for these two people standing to my left. Uh, Minister uh, Guibault, merci beaucoup pour votre appui. Certainement, votre département de patrimoine est responsable pour les bibliothèques et, et la Bibliothèque uh, nationale du Canada. And uh, you have been uh, a, a stalwart supporter from day one when we approached you with this pro project, and we thank you sincerely. Merci beaucoup. Catherine McKenna, who is celebrating her 50th birthday today. Happy birthday, Catherine. Bonne fête, uh, Catherine. And Catherine uh, and I met uh, before our respective last elections, and one of the things we agreed on was that we wanted to ensure that we had a library befitting a G7 capital city. We don't really have that right now on Metcalf. It served us well, but it's a bit of a bunker, I've said. And we're replacing that with this beautiful new library uh, that uh, will be uh, the envy of many cities around Canada and certainly around the world. And uh, Catherine, thank you for your dogged determination to uh, get this project through Treasury Board and approved by Cabinet. It is very, very much appreciated, and it will be one of these great buildings that people will want to come and visit many, many times, both residents as well as visitors, parce que le tourisme est vraiment important pour uh, notre ville ici. Thank you to our elders. Prior to the media arriving, we had a private uh, blessing ceremony, a smudging and for your engagement in every aspect of the visioning, design, creation of this beautiful facility. We value and appreciate the participation of Kit, uh, Kitigan Zibi and Anishinaabe and the Algonquins of Pequoctagon First Nation in the process, and we thank them for their important contributions. Nous sommes reconnaissants envers Kitigan Zibi and Anishinaabe et les Premières Nations Algonquins de Pequoctagon pour leur participation avec ce projet. Adisoke refers to the telling of stories. And storytelling is at the heart of communities, and the name Adisoke is a meaningful reflection on the importance of coming together to share our stories, and more importantly, to learn from one another. In a meaningful and fitting name, it is a meaningful and fitting name for this distinctive facility developed in the spirit of relation building, active listening, decolonization, and reconciliation. And we are truly honored to receive the name Adisoke, and again, I want to thank our elders and the members of the host nation for this inspiring community and shared understanding. The project team will continue to engage with Anishinaabe Algonquin Nation and other First Nations, Inuit and Métis individuals and organizations to inform the programs and services that will be offered at uh, this branch as well as the Children's Discovery Center. We're celebrating a, a major milestone for this project, one that is so important to the relationship with the host nation and other First Nations, Inuit and Métis. And uh, for that, I thank you all very much for being with us today. A space to build relationships and forge partnerships and a space that will link us together, past, present, and future. And to learn more about the name uh, story of Adesoke, please visit adesoke.ca. That's adesoke.ca. I look forward to welcoming everyone to Adesake when it opens in 2024, and then the official opening that will take place in 2025. Encore, merci beaucoup pour votre appui et votre dévouement uh, avec ce projet très important pour la ville d'Ottawa. And I'll hand it back to Matt Luloff. Thank you. Merci. Great, great.
Thank you very much, Mayor Watson. Nous sommes très reconnaissants envers les deux communautés algonquines hautes uh, et accordant de l'importance à leur participation au processus et nous les remercions pour cette contribution. And now I'm pleased to welcome the Honorable Stephen Guibault, a Minister of Canadian Heritage, to say a few words, Minister. Merci beaucoup, Monsieur le maire, pour, pour, pour vos bons mots. Euh, distingués membres des Premières Nations, Catherine, bonne fête. Un représentant de la Bibliothèque et archives du Canada et de la Bibliothèque publique d'Ottawa, mesdames et messieurs, chers amis, bonjour. We respectfully acknowledge that the land on which we are located are part of the traditional territory of the Afanishnabing Algonquin Nation. Très heureux d'être ici en personne et d'avoir le privilège de participer à cette cérémonie. Let me begin by saying thank you, merci, miigwech, to the Anishinaabeg host nation of Kitigan-Zibi and Pekwakanagan. Thank you for the gift of the name that will remain in place for the life of the building that we will build here on this land. Thank you for the gift of a name that is so evocative of the stories that will be housed here. And thank you for the gift of a name that will serve as a reminder of what it looks like when we get a process right, when we move forward together in partnership with respect and consideration in the spirit of reconciliation. Adisoke, storytelling, l'art de l'écrit. Pour des générations, les résidents et les visiteurs de cette ville formidable se retrouveront ici pour découvrir des récits à propos des gens, des cultures et de l'histoire de notre pays. Lorsque nous écoutons ou nous lisons un récit, nous faisons preuve d'empathie. Nous expérimentons le monde d'un point de vue différent. Nous apprenons. Et grâce à cet apprentissage, nous comprenons mieux ce qui nous entoure et nous sentons davantage liés à nos semblables. I would like to commend all of the partners involved in this project for providing us with an example of apathy in action. Empathy in action, my apologies. Your partnership, one forged in mutual respect and cemented with a true spirit of engagement and collaboration, should serve as a model for others. And it is a partnership that will continue when this magnificent facility is open to the public through planned programming and installations. Cette installation est unique à bien des égards. C'est le fruit d'un partenariat sans précédent entre une administration municipale, le gouvernement fédéral et les communautés autochtones sur un site extraordinaire au centre-ville d'Ottawa. C'est aussi une installation carboneutre qui contribuera à verdir le Canada. Nous avons investi 34,5 millions de dollars supplémentaires dans ce projet pour atteindre notamment un bilan carbone nul. Avec le Centre de préservation de bibliothèques et archives à Gatineau, ce sera la deuxième installation fédérale construite conformément aux exigences pour la stratégie pour un gouvernement vert. Nous l'avons dit, elle porte le nom de Adishoke pour refléter son identité. I'm looking forward to seeing this facility, home to both Library and Archives Canada and the Ottawa Public Library, come to life. This was a long journey. <laughs> yeah. I think it was maybe seven or eight years ago when I was talking to folks of Ottawa Centre about the Ottawa Public Library and how it could be a lot more than a library. And through a lot of vision, through a lot of folks, um, a huge thank you uh, to uh, Leslie Weir um, and Danielle um, also to Guy Bertillon, who was uh, the, the chief librarian and archivist before, um, to Mayor Watson, uh, to Matt, to I see Ralston, uh, to the whole city uh, that was really engaged in this project. I mean, I think we had a vision, but what was, I don't think it was missing, but I don't think we recognized the huge opportunity to partner uh, with the Algonquin Nation and the communities here. Um, Kitagon Zibi and the Algonquins of Pikwaganen, Pikwag uh, First Nation. Um, and when you look at what you have done through your generosity, this isn't just a name. It's a gift of your language. It's a gift of your culture. 
It's a spirit of reconciliation at a time where we need to move forward in reconciliation. And it's just something extraordinarily special. Uh, when you think about infrastructure, it's a made up name. Infrastructure is really about building the future we want. And this building is more than a building. It's a journey. This building, if you look behind us, uh, you can see that it's going to be open to everyone, free, a place where young people can come. They can study. Apparently, they can play music, so it's going to be pretty awesome, uh, where seniors can gather. We're certainly First Nations, Métis, Inuit peoples will have a special place, but we'll also be able to tell the story of this, where they've been for millennia. That if you think about the Ottawa River, this was a gathering spot for millennia for Indigenous peoples. Um, alors, c'est vraiment quelque chose d'extraordinaire aujourd'hui. C'est plus qu'un nom à de soquer. C'est vraiment un cadeau de, la, de votre culture, de votre langue de la réconciliation. When you think about reconciliation, and I've been thinking about this a lot, like most Canadians, it's hard. Uh, I spoke with uh, former uh, Assembly First Nation Chief Harry Bellegarde, and he said, look, we can see the mountaintop when it comes to reconciliation, and now we all need to do the hard work of climbing. And I think today, is an example of how we're moving forward together, how it is more than a building. It's a journey, um, and it's a journey we're doing together. So thank you so much for the gift of this name. Um, this building is going to be a space uh, for everyone. It's also an example of action on climate, because it's going to be net zero. And that is very important to, I know, Indigenous peoples, but it's very important to Canadians, and it's very important to me personally. I certainly can't wait to be back uh, with everyone uh, when it opens. You can see it's looking, we're getting on our way, but uh, it really is extraordinary. And to thanks, thanks to everyone who's made this happen, because it has been a long journey. Vraiment, c'est quelque chose d'extraordinaire. Merci. Adesoke refers to the telling of stories, and today we celebrate a new chapter in our journey towards sharing our stories and learning from one another. We are truly honored to receive the name Adesoke. I will now pass things over to our moderator, who will open the floor for media questions. And we will conclude today's event with photo opportunities and a closing drumming song after media questions. Thank you all for being here today. Alors, merci beaucoup. Good afternoon, everyone. Bonjour à tous. My name is Ben Longo, and I'll be the moderator of this question period. Je m'appelle Ben Longo, et je serai l'animateur de cette période de questions. I will now invite each agency in alphabetical order to ask their, their question. You may ask one question with a follow-up. Nous allons maintenant répondre aux questions des médias qui pourront poser une question et une question de suivi. We will now start with Kate Porter at CBC Ottawa. Hi, Kate. Uh, just a few things. Um, we do have a number of things which I know our project team can detail for you, but I think, uh, you know, the first part was getting together and understanding what we were about and building a relationship. And that's been, um, it's taken time to develop, but that has helped. The next thing we did really was working together to get input into the design of the building. And I know our team can give you the specifics, but the building design you see is 
uh, reflective of input from our partners, and I think that's very important. And then inside the building, there'll be things like wayfinding, language, different programming, and all those are in various stages of development. So that's sort of a high-level answer. Um, I'll leave it at that. Thank you. There. Thank you, Kate. Um, and we are going to have spaces that are um, designed and, 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 and dedicated to the Indigenous communities uh, uh, in the region and to the host nations. Um, we at Libraries and Archives Canada hold a great deal of collections, as you well know. Um, and uh, we work very closely with our Indigenous Advisory Circle and with working on our Heritage Indigenous Action Plan um, for us to move forward with reconciliation and decolonialization. So we'll be looking forward to working with the um, host nations in terms of the preservation of their languages and their stories and supporting them in being able to carry out that preservation and also make their stories that they choose to share accessible to those who come into the building. Uh, we are going to have a museum quality uh, exhibit space where we'll be able to showcase many of our collections and those collections of, of the Ottawa Public Library. And I think we will be able to showcase uh, many of our collections that do relate to Indigenous communities and to their incredible contributions that they've made uh, to this country and to this city and to this region. So we're really excited to work in collaboration with the Ottawa Public Library and with the host nations in terms of our programming and how we can make our collections accessible uh, you know, to, to the, all of the visitors that we have coming in, whether they're residents of the area or coming from much further afield. Thank you. Uh, my second question is for Mayor Watson. today. Thank yeah. you for doing this. Thank you, Mayor. Kate. It's uh, not on this topic, but I wonder if you had any comment to make on the reports in recent days that Deputy Mayor and Canada North Councillor Jenna Suds might seek the nomination. Well, uh, like uh, all of us, uh, I, I read about it in the Hill Times. Um, I don't know what Jenna's final decision is going to be, but uh, certainly um, I think she'd be a, an incredible uh, candidate for Parliament. Uh, we would obviously be very sad to see her uh, leave because she's uh, an important uh, part of our, our council. Uh, but, you know, these uh, decisions are ones that she will take, I'm sure, with her family and friends and supporters. And uh, where, whichever path she follows, uh, we wish her continued success because she's been a great advocate for Canada. She's worked on a lot of tough files like the Club Link file, as you know. And uh, I have tremendous uh, respect for her uh, abilities and uh, her commitment and her passion for public service. So, as I said, uh, it's a decision she will take. Uh, uh, I think a lot of her colleagues I can speak for uh, would miss her if she uh, is successful, uh, but she would still be in the community serving Canada and Ottawa at the federal level uh, if she's successful in, in the election. Thank you. Next is uh, Alex Googe with uh, City News. Oh. Hello, so I just have one quick question for today, and it's for Matt. Um, so in the presentation you mentioned there was some music components coming to this. Could you kind of elaborate more on that and why it's important, especially in Ottawa, for that to be a resource available? Yeah, the, the Ottawa Public Library for, for some years now has had uh, musical instrument lending uh, libraries. Uh, recently we've expanded uh, the... Uh, uh, the, the Musical Instrument Lending Library to, to Cumberland, so it's, it's moved east um, uh, as well. Uh, in in, the, uh, in the, the new um, uh, joint facility, uh, there will be spaces uh, for recording uh, and, and the continuation 
uh, of the Musical Instrument Lending Library. It is so important uh, that we remove all the barriers that we can uh, between uh, arts and music uh, and, and, and everyone. I think that uh, we really need to level the playing field when it comes to uh, the ability to, to enjoy uh, and to play music. Uh, growing up uh, in, in Orleans when I was a kid, I had a, a rock band when I was uh, 14 years old. Uh, and when we were practicing in the basement, I wasn't out uh, getting myself in trouble. Uh, so I think that it's, uh, it's incredibly important uh, that, uh, that, that we continue to reimagine what a library space can be uh, and, uh, and what, uh, what resources are available uh, to, uh, uh, to our kids uh, and, uh, and to people of all ages. So I'd encourage you, uh, if, uh, if you haven't ever picked up an instrument before, or perhaps you picked one up when you were younger, uh, to head into an Ottawa Public Library branch that, uh, that has the, uh, the Musical Instrument Lending Library, because uh, it really is uh, a thing of beauty. So uh, you know, thanks to, th to Sun Life for their, uh, their investment in that, and uh, looking forward to, to, to seeing that uh, continue to expand. Thank you, and that's just my only question today. Thank you, Alex. Next is uh, Jackie Perez with CTV Ottawa. Uh, my question is for Mayor Jim Watson. Mayor, when it comes to uh, the vaccines, will you be requiring the mandatory, uh, mandatory vaccine proof for city workers as people head back into the workplace? Yeah, thank you for the question. Um, I checked with our legal staff. We unfortunately don't have that legal ability at the municipal level to impose those restrictions. Uh, on a personal basis, I think uh, it makes uh, just good common sense that uh, people uh, should be encouraged uh, to get the two doses because we know the two doses are much more effective than the one dose and obviously significantly more effective than, than no doses at all. And so while we've seen other jurisdictions in the United States uh, move towards a more forceful uh, regime, uh, that would really have to come from the provincial government. Other room, um, I believe it's on the fourth floor, a community space where we have a circle again, and the importance of that is, you know, been made to known to me today, uh, why we want a circle and the benefits of having that relationship. Um, I think, as Leslie had mentioned too, uh, you know, in our collections, obviously, we'll be looking at that. And then programming. We have to look at, are there ways that we can incorporate programming going forward with all the partner groups? Um, so I don't have those specifics yet because that's still something that's to be done. And I think the key there is the relationship continues and there's continued work together to, um, to bring the partners together and develop what we need to make it a, a truly great facility. Thank you. Thank you so much. No follow-ups. Thank you, Jill. Next, prochain, nous avons Julien Paquette. Oh, sorry. Oh, Go ahead. Sorry about that. <laughs> so I, I just wanted to add that we're working very hard with the host nations to ensure that it's not just the name, although the name, of course, is, is critically important and we'll have you know, a, a, a very high profile here in the city, nationally and internationally. But we're looking at other ways that we can be sure that that um, the uh, language is very present, um, you know, in 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 the the building, and we're looking at um, uh, other ways that we can be sure that uh, collections are showcased. And uh, so I think I think that continued dialogue and looking at integrating into our programming, um, you know, our partnership with the Indigenous Nations. So I just really wanted to mention that the importance of the language. Thank you so much. No follow-ups. Next is uh, prochain, nous allons à Julien Paquette avec le droit. Uh, la question serait pour Monsieur Watson. Uh, pendant que vous avancez, uh, je, vais, je vais commencer. Uh, vous avez mentionné l'importance de, de, de nommer ces, des endroits comme celui-là, uh, puis de, de voir dans ces noms-là refléter. Euh, la, la culture et l'histoire des, des communautés euh, autochtones. Euh, Qu'est-ce qu'il y en est par contre? Est-ce qu'il est qu y a des processus en cours pour revoir un peu la, la, la toponymie qui, existante à la ville d'Ottawa au-delà de, 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 des, des nouveaux bâtiments, des nouvelles rues? Euh, on, je sais que par exemple, on a renommé l'avenue Langevin euh, il y a quelques mois, est -ce que, puis le, le, pont Mégne, le pont Prince de Galles. Est-ce qu'il y a, est qu a d'autres processus d'évaluation en cours pour euh, euh, renommer des endroits qui ne sont peut-être peut pas des. Uh, je pense que non, uh, pour le moment, mais si on avait un nouveau uh, édifice comme cette bibliothèque, ça c'est une opportunité pour nous autres de, de nommer, pas renommer, uh, la, la bibliothèque centrale. 
um, uh, tous les membres de la communauté avaient le droit de présenter un um, une plan d'action à la, à la conseil municipal pour uh, renommer un uh, édifice ou un pont ou uh, quelque chose comme ça. Mais pour le moment, uh, uh, j'ai parlé avec beaucoup des, des membres du conseil. Uh, je ne pense pas qu'il y ait un autre nom uh, pendant les prochains uh, quelques mois. Uh, uh, mais uh, si uh, uh, les membres de, de la public avaient des idées, certainement nous sommes ouverts pour, um, pour ça. Councillor King, par exemple, a renommé la rue Langevin à son quartier il y a quelques mois. Et ça, c'est un bon exemplaire que la communauté travaille avec le conseiller. Et on avait un nouveau nom qui est euh, aussi William Commander, euh, comme le pont. Euh, et ça, c'est un bon exemplaire de euh, la coopération entre la communauté autochtone, la communauté dans un quartier et le conseil euh, local et tout le conseil municipal. Parfait. Merci. Merci. Euh, la prochaine question serait un peu similaire pour, euh, je ne sais pas quel de nos ministres fédéraux voudrait, voudrait y répondre, mais euh, je ne sais pas lequel de, de, de nos ministres fédéraux voudrait répondre, mais est-ce qu'il est qu y a aussi, on a parlé par exemple récemment de, le, du, de la promenade de Sir Johnny McDonald, est-ce que est-ce qu'il y a une volonté de, 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 de revoir la, la toponymie de certains lieux? Euh, pour des noms qui sont associés à un passé un peu moins euh, glorieux de, de, de notre Colonia, pays. Colonial. Bien, je pense que c'est important de... Plusieurs en ont parlé, mais la réconciliation, c'est très clairement... C'est un voyage. Alors, euh, il y a beaucoup de choses qu'on doit faire en, en faisant ce, ce voyage-là. Certainement, la, la toponymie, bon, il faut voir que évidemment dans les, dans les édifices fédéraux, évidemment, no, le fédéral ne contrôle pas la toponymie toponymie, par exemple, au niveau des municipalités. Euh, mais nous avons commencé, on parlait de, de langues autochtones. Lorsque notre gouvernement arrive en 2015, le gouvernement fédéral investit 5 millions de dollars pour toutes les langues autochtones à travers le pays. Euh, je sais parce que je suis le ministre responsable de la première loi sur les langues autochtones au pays qui a été co-construite avec les Premières Nations, les Métis et les, et les Inuits. Et elle, est, elle est mise en œuvre de façon conjointe. Cette année, le budget pour les langues autochtones au Canada était 12 fois supérieur à ce qu'il était en 2015, lorsque nous avons pris le pouvoir. L'an prochain, il sera 24 fois supérieur à ce qu'il était euh, en, en, en 2015. Donc, cette année, nous avons réussi à financer tous les projets euh, à, à ce qui a trait à la langue inuit. Donc, tout, toutes les soumissions que nous avons reçues, nous avons pu les financer. Nous ne sommes pas encore là au niveau des Premières Nations ou des Inuits. Je pense qu'il y a énormément de choses que, que nous devons faire sur ce sur ce chemin-là de, de la réconciliation. Évidemment, euh, l'adoption par, par le Parlement de, de, de la journée sur, sur la vérité et les ré la réconciliation qui, qui aura lieu pour la première fois cette année, le 30 septembre, donc une journée nationale pour se rappeler de, de ce passage-là très sombre de notre histoire. Donc, nous, nous, nous regardons à faire plusieurs choses, notamment au niveau de, 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 des questions de toponymie d'édifices de, fédéraux, par exemple. C'est certainement une possibilité. Merci. Merci beaucoup. Merci, Julien. Lastly, we have uh, John Willing with the Ottawa Citizen. Thank you. Uh, start with a question about the library. Could you guess, uh, just give us an update on the construction RFP? I'm not quite sure when it closes. And if you've had any information, intel so far within the RFP, RFP process that there might be some budget challenges based on the design that you put forward. I invite uh, Simon Dupuis uh, from our project team to come up uh, to answer that question. Thanks for the question, John. Um, we're anticipating the construction tender to close um, later this summer, early fall. We're still in an inquiry process with the general contractors to finalize that tender closing period. In terms of um, budget and schedule, all I can say is what we've said to date, which is that we continue to hear uh, pressures related to both the budget and schedule related to the pandemic and the uh, market conditions in Ottawa, but we're not going to know the true effect of that until we see the tender prices. Thank you. Thanks, Simon. Uh, Mayor Watson, if I could ask you just a question about the hospital project and the trolley line.
It's nice to see you, John. Hi, Mayor. Uh, How's it going? You're not in your uh, en suite upstairs. No, I'm heading there right often. after this. <laughs> um, you know, I'm curious about the, the hospital project. The master plan will go to planning committee soon. And I know the hospital seems very bullish about having a trillion line entrance on the south side of Carling. And I'm wondering how important is it for the city to have that entrance to the Dallas Lake Station? And it can it be done in sync with either the city's work with stage two or the hospital's preliminary work with their parkade? My view is the closer the station is to the hospital, the better. Um, that's easy to say. There are some obviously technical and financial challenges when it comes to uh, building another station. But um, I know that our respective staffs are working uh, together. I've had several discussions with, uh, with Cameron Love and others involved with the project because uh, we obviously want this uh, facility to be as accessible to public transit as possible. There's still always going to be a need for parking because uh, often, uh, you know, when you're bringing a loved one to a hospital or an appointment or for emergency, you're not going by train or bus, you're coming by car and you need that, that parking uh, capacity. So uh, my view is that if, if uh, we are able to uh, work out the logistics and the finances, then obviously if we can get a station that uh, uh, better serves the staff and the patients and the visitors to the new Ottawa hospital, uh, then we should be uh, doing whatever we can to uh, see that come through. Um, as you know, and you did a very good um, piece on this in The Citizen, there are some uh, challenges in terms of the schedule and the timetable, and uh, there's a cost involved, obviously, at building a another station. But, um, you know, uh, I look forward to uh, the conclusion of those discussions between our staff, our funding partners, uh, as well as the civic hospital and obviously community groups that, that surround the area, uh, to see if we can come up with a plan that uh, better meets the uh, transit and public transit needs of uh, those users of the hospital. You're the dean. <laughs> You're the dean of the of, of the press gallery. <laughs> well, uh, to be perfectly fair, we just don't have the money to do that. As you know, uh, we don't have it in our fiscal plan uh, to fund phase three without the um, support of the federal and provincial governments. So uh, I don't know what the cost would be. It's obviously in the tens of millions of dollars. Uh, we would look to uh, you know, uh, partners to uh, help us with that because uh, uh, we have, um, uh, as you know, put together an affordability plan that is fully funded with federal provincial dollars phase two, and that's going very well. And uh, our next priority, of course, is phase three, which would be 50-50 uh, cost sharing between the federal and provincial governments. Thank you. Thank you, John. That concludes the question period for this event. Cela conclut la période de questions pour cet événement. Uh, we will now have uh, a drumming ceremony, I believe. A closing, uh, a closing prayer and drumming. Thank you. Merci
Yeah, I just want to have a